Hi, boys and girls. Ready to read? Before we start on our chapter, let's talk about a couple things that, that Ragweed talked about yesterday. Have you figured out what the human nests are? Did you think about that? What are the human nests? And also, there were box-like metallic things, brightly colored, each with a human inside, and two bright lights in front. What do you think that is? Think about the human nest. I think those are people's houses. And now he's kind of in a not so good part of town and it talks about the human nest being vacant and the metallic boxes are upside down with the wheels sticking in the air. Those are cars, automobiles. But gotta remember, ragweed calls them human nest and metallic boxes. Chapter five, clutch. Hmm, wonder what that's about. Let's see, is it about a person? Or is it about a item of some sort? Ragweed pressed against the blocked hole, only to have it suddenly open. A paw reached out, grabbed Ragweed's shoulder, and pulled him forcibly inside. Whew. Then, just as Silverside was completing her pounce, the piece of wood, for that was what had been blocking the hole, slammed her in the face. Stunned, a panting ragweed lay upon a not very clean rug. It took a moment before he could focus. A female mouse was looking down at him. She was tall and thin as a stick, brought her lenless suggested toughness, nothing brittle. Her fur was gray-brown in color, except for the top of her head, which had been dyed green. Her nose was blunt, her whiskers poorly groomed. From her left ear dangled a purple plastic bead at the end of a tiny chain. Hey dude, what's up, she said. Ragweed blinked, what? Like Silversides almost snuff you, Mouse. Silversides? Hey, Mouse, you saying you didn't see that sucker coming down on you? You mean that cat? The mouse laughed. Like she wasn't a bus, was she? Nor understanding what was being said, to, not understanding what was being said to him, Ragweed looked around the space into which he had been pulled. It had a lofty ceiling with windows all around the top. At one end, there was a wheel attached to a bar that stuck out from a wall. Other stick-like things rose up from the floor. What is this place? Ragweed asked. It's a Ford Mustang, the mouse replied. 66 hard top, like tight, right? I have to make a connection, boys and girls. I didn't have a 66 Mustang, but I had a 65 Mustang. Oh, Ragweed said, not particularly enlightened. He wasn't impressed with a Mustang. The car was astonishingly messy. Off to one side was an unkept mound of shuttled, shedded cloth, a bed. Ragweed guessed. Crumbs lay scattered everywhere. Pieces of paper littered the area. A strip of wood with four wheels, Ragweed had no idea what that was, had been tossed into a corner. A wooden spoon on which several strings had been stretched from the narrow end to the wide end was affixed to a wall. You got a name, dude? The mouse asked. Ragweed. That's cool, the mouse said. What, what's it mean? Mean? Well, I suppose it's a plant, but I never think of it that way. 
awesome, the city mouse said and held out a paw. Ragweed offered his, but instead of shaking it, she house mouse slapped it. Gotcha, she said. May I ask your name? Ragweed inquired politely. Clutch. Clutch. Clutch, dude, like in a car. And, and a car? Ragweed inquired. Clutch laughing. What you're sitting in, dude? Big metal things on wheels with motors. Stink and noise. They haul people around. Oh, yes, and thanks for saving me. Hey, no problem. See that silver sides in an uptown cat. She and her pal, Graybar, hang around, you know, sort of like guards. Like they go for any little meat on the feet with a different beat. Know what I'm saying? Bad to the bone. Ragweed shuddered. I guess. I mean, she she heads up an organization called Felines Enraged About Rodents, F-E-A-R, trying to keep the town clean and pure, like they don't want any riffraff. That's us, mice, coming in. And what's already here, see, has to be right, decent, and respectful. That is, right, decent, and respectful, according to them. Know what I'm saying? What's a rodent? Ragween asked. Like a fancy name for mouse, Clutch said. Hey, mouse, exactly how new are you around here? I just got off the train. From the country? How'd you know? Hey, I see it all the time. The train pulls in, dudes get off to take a peek. Know what I'm saying? trying to get a life right, wanting to check things out. But like, you are all so green, the grass is envious. Oh, Ragweed said. Anyway, welcome to where it's at, Mouse. You want action? You planted right. Like, I'm saying, dude, this place, Mouse Town, ain't pretty, but hey, it's cool. This town hops. This town does tricks. You do it right. It's totally rave. Awesome. Check it out. Ragweed blinked. I beg your pardon. Like, it's that fat city, Clutch went on. It's down, sweet, tight out of town, downtown. The hot spot. It rules. You cool enough to hang with me, dude? Actually, I'm quite warm, replied an utterly bewildered ragweed. I had to run very fast to get away from that cat. Clutch laughed. Hey, mouse, you are seriously alien. Look, when I say cool, I mean, you know, like, it's good. Get that? Fat. Fat? It means cool, dude. Sweet. Oh, okay, yes, thank you. I know I am fat, sort of, Ragweed stammered. Do you live here? Yo, dude, this is my pad. I can think of other cars I'd like better, but being on my own is my thing. Took what I could get. The freedom is worth it, mouse. Like so sweet. My buds come, go few parties to lighten the load now and then, know what I'm saying? Mostly, though, just me, dude. I rip for liberty. Like, dude, I do what I do when I feel like doing it. And what exactly do you do? Ragweed asked. Hey, dude, I see it this way. Nothing happens in the world without noise. Know what I'm saying? So I'm a musician, make the sound, tickle the strings, like that's my axe over there, see? Clutch nodded to the wooden spoon with threads on it that hung on the wall. 
I'm afraid I don't know what that is, Ragweed said. Clutch gazed at him in wonderment. It's a guitar, dude. Hey, like you must really be from some kind of Zeke. A what? Never mind, Clutch said with a grin. Like there's two things I'm into. Music, you know, rock and roll, and the skateboard scene. I've got wheels and a way down funky band. We call ourselves the B-flat tires. Pretty cool, don't you think? Actually, we're one short. I mean, ragweed, I'm puffing seriously about silver sides like she chewed muffler last week. Know what I'm saying? She said she didn't like his singing. She said only cats should do that. Makes me want to uncork my guts. Who was Muffler? Ragweed asked. Our lead singer. Hey, dude, can you sing? I don't think so. Bummer. We could have used another throw. Anyway, dude, you can crash here as long as you want to. Make yourself at home. Just be cool and keep one eye peeled for Silverside and the other cats. Know what I'm saying? I'm really not sure, Ragweed admitted. Well, anyway, you're in, dude. Like, give me four. Four what? Four to the paw, mouse. Clutch held up her paw. Ragweed reached out to shake it. Instead, Clutch slapped down on his paw, laughing. Hey, Mouse, I feel like I'm greeting Christopher Columbus. You know, welcome to the rest of the world, dude, like we're here. What took you so long? I think I'd better get some sleep, Ragweed said. His head was swirling. Right, mellow out. Kick back, chill, and sleep in like I do it all the time. But for now, I've got some things to do. Whatever. Just make sure you don't let silver sides in. Ragweed looked around anxiously. Will she try? Hey, dude, Clutch went on. That cat's serious bad news. That's why I have a bolt hole out back. But, like, if Silverside wants you out, dude, she's not going to rest till you're heading for heaven in an Indy 500. Know what I'm saying? Can you handle it? Take the heat with the chill? I think so, Ragweed said, though he could not help wondering if it might not be wise to save time and his life to catch the next train right out of Amperville. So he made a friend. Chapter six, F-E-A-R. Having failed to catch ragweed, an angry, frustrated silver size slunk home. There she hoped she would find some comfort, perhaps a chin stroke from a human, a fondle behind the ears. Using her head to butt open the cat flap that had been installed at the back of the house, she went to the girl's room. The girl, however, would have nothing to do with her. Once again, a mouse, blinker this time, stood in Silverside's way. There were times Silverside was convinced that it could just get her claws into that horrid white rodent. Much that was wrong in the world and her life would be made right. Unfortunately, the girl was too protective. Telling herself she preferred to be left alone, Silversides took a few chews of the dry, gritty food bits in her bowl, lapped up two licks of stale water, then retreated to her bed by the furnace. Though Silversides tried to settle down, she remained 
agitated. In her mind, she kept seeing ragweed pinned against the hole in the car. She knew she would have caught him too if some mouse had not interfered. All she saw of that mouse was the green fur on the top of its head. For the rest of the afternoon, Silver Sides lay fuming on her rug. By early evening, she was intensely restless, feeling a need to do something to calm her anger. Then she thought of Blinker, the white mouse upstairs. Maybe tonight she would be lucky enough to catch the vermin, or at least to torment him. Rousing herself, the white cat crept to the top floor of the house by the way of the back stairs. Stealthily, she moved toward the girl's room. To her great joy, the door had been left ajar. A small shove and Silverside slipped into the room. There she paused. Though the light was dim, her vision was good. Her sense of smell was better. The scent of mouse was overwhelming. Blinker was close. What a pleasure, thought Silversides, to nab him and drag him from the girl's room. It just had to be done quietly so no one would know what happened. Treading lightly, Silversides let her nose guide her forward. Within moments, she knew exactly where the mouse was on the girl's bed. The cat nose up, rose up on her hind legs. Sure enough, there lay Blinker asleep on the pillow a few inches from the girl's golden hair, the spot where Silversides used to sleep. The cat's wrath boiled. Suddenly she sprang up on the bed, then slithered forward on her belly. A yard from the mouse, she tensed her rear legs and waggled her rump. After a count of three, she jumped. As she did, her rear foot scraped the girl's blanket. That was enough sound for Blinker. His eyes popped open. He saw the cat midair. Squeaking with terror, he dived for the protection of the girl's hair. The girl, disturbed, shifted her head. Though Silverside knew she was going to miss the mouse, it was too late to hold back. When she came down, she landed right on the girl's face. The girl screamed, sat up, grabbed the cat, and flung her away. Silversides, managing to twist about, landed on her feet and galloped from the room. As she raced down the hall, she heard the girl scream, Get out, you awful cat! In a rage even greater than usual, Silversides tore out of the house. At first, she had no thought where she was going. Very soon, however, she veered towards Graybar's home. The vice president of F.E.A.R. lived a few city blocks away in a reeking old sewer. It took but moments to reach. Graybar was eating from a pile of discarded chicken innards and bones. Hey, pal, Graybar said when Silversides appeared. Good timing. Eats. I'm not hungry, the white cat said. Food stolen from garbage was but one of Graybar's habits Silverside endured. I'm mad. No big deal, Graybar sneered as he twitched a ragged ear. You're always mad. What's got you this time? Silversides recounted not only how she had failed to catch ragweed, but what happened regarding Blinker. Graybar nodded with sympathy. 
Ever notice that when these mice get away, it's never on their own? Always depending on someone else, they gang up on us. They are vicious, Silversides agreed. Tell you what and though, Graybar said, crunching an old chicken leg bone in two with his rear teeth. I've got some good news. I need some. I found one of their clubs. They call it the Cheese Squeeze Club. Silverside's gloom dropped away. Her claws tingled. Where is it? Down on Durham Street. Used to be a shoe shining shop. How about you and me going over and brightening things up? I'd love to, Silverside said. You're on, babe. Soon as I eat this chicken heart, we'll go get us some mice for dessert. Well, the two cats are up to no good. They're gonna go to the mouse club and cause problems. Um, and so we'll see what happens to, now we have Ragweed and Clutch, and we have Silver Sides, and who's the other bad guy? Graybar. Silver Sides and Graybar are the bad guys, and Clutch and Ragweed are the good guys.